Hello, my name is Rachel. Um, today I wanted to share with you this book that I just read. It's called Portrait for Christ by Reverend Richard Warren Brandt. Um, this is a nonfiction book. It's very small, like 150 pages. Highly recommend this book. This book takes place in 1944. This man right here is Richard. Um, he lived in Romania in 19, did I say 54? 1944. Um, and during the time when the Russians, a uh, communist party, started to take over Romania and make them become a communist country. Uh, they would spread, they would be doing this by force, by bringing their army into the country. Um, they would take things from the citizens uh, that belonged to them so that people had no possessions. That's part of the communist idea is that people, um, the, the citizens in the country, do not uh, have belongings. Everything belongs to the government and then the government gives it out as they see fit so that everyone has equalness, even though the equalness is not enough for them to survive. So they would spread propaganda in the country of Romania and let me put this back here. There we go. So they would spread propaganda in the country of Romania. Um, by saying that there is no God, Christianity is dead, um, and the best way to live is by being a communist. At this time, Richard, the author of this book, was a preacher, and he had a congregation, and the Romanians, I'm sorry, the Russians allowed preachers to preach at this time in churches, but they were very censored on what they could say and what they couldn't say. They had to speak well of the Communist Party. If they didn't, they would get sent to prison. So for a while, Richard had this church, and he said that his gospel was like a wa very watered-down gospel um, that he could preach and other preachers could preach, and that if they didn't do what the communists said, they would either go in prison or be beaten in the streets. So Richard decided that he was going to start an underground church where he would go and hide in other people's houses and have services there. He would still have his services at the church building and have the watered down sermon there. But then he would go later on that night and have services in people's houses. They would have services out in the woods or they would have them in barns, wherever they could go to find, um, to have a hiding place so that the Russian troops would not find them and send him to prison. Well, one day he did get uh, caught by the Russian troops and he gets into prison for eight years. He was married and he did have a child. Um, and his wife actually thought that he was dead for these eight years. He says that in prison, though, he was still able to be part of the underground church. There were several other people who would speak up against the Communism Party or uh, still preach God's word, and they would also be sent to prison. He said that the underground church was still very strong in prison. They would get uh, beaten imprisoned. They would get starved in prison. He said that they were only allowed one piece of bread a week. So they were very um, malnourished and I can't even imagine just getting one piece of bread a week in his situation. While he was there in prison, he was also able to preach to Russian guards and convert them to Christ. He said that the underground church consisted even of high-ranking communist uh, party leaders, but they had to be quiet about their faith and just get along to get along so that they could help Christians here and there whenever they had the opportunity to do so without getting caught. Some of the torture that they had in prisons were absolutely horrible. Um, one of the things he said that they would do was 
hang people upside down from the ceiling and they would beat them almost like a pinata and every time the person came swinging back they would hit them again over and over and over again another uh another torture that they had in these prisons was they had a refrigerator cell and they would put them in the cell that was like covered in ice the walls were covered in ice and they would be in the cell about naked and as they were about ready to start having a hypothermia and dying of hypothermia the doctor would check on them and he would pull them out of the cell when he saw the signs of hypothermia warm them up enough to live and then put them back in the cell so that they could repeat the process over and over again. Um, they would also try to brainwash them, telling them that Jesus, God is dead. And how could there be a God if you're in being tortured like this? The guards in this prison would actually torture them about their faith and make fun of them for what they believed. They would hold communion services, and the communion was not communion. The communion was number one and number two, and they would make them take this and laugh at them and just horrible, horrible things that these prison guards would do to these Christians. But all through that, they were faithful. All through that, they loved Jesus. They would sing praises to him. They would be singing a song to Jesus. They'd be dragged out of the jail, beaten, for singing that song, go back in the cell and continue to sing that song. Uh, these people were some of the strongest Christians I've ever heard of in my life. There's this one part in the book where he tells about how the Russians would create this propaganda book that everyone that was passed out to everyone and the book was basically taking bible verses and construing it and saying how evil these verses were and explaining why it was a bad idea to follow the bible well at this time in romania they had gotten rid of the russians had gotten rid of all the bibles and any kind of biblical um, like literature, anything with a Bible verse in it, they've gotten rid of it. And so the Romanians did not have Bibles for the longest time while they were in prisons. They did not have scripture at all. So anything that they knew about Jesus was all from memory and from their heart and their soul. So they got these books that were atheistic books. And in these atheistic books would have Bible verses, and then underneath it, it would be explaining why these Bible verses were so bad. Well, the Christians started really, really wanting these books, and the communists thought, wow, this is really great because we're really teaching them why the Bible's wrong. No, they would just use those books for the Bible verses, and... God was able to work through the negative books that the people were sending out in order to get his word to these people who were spiritually starving for his word. They wanted it so bad, even just one verse from the Bible. They would live off of that spiritually for years. Um, so that was amazing that they were able to still get the Bible, even though it was... Uh, supposed to be a negative, um, you know, against the Bible, but they were still able to get the Bible to them, still able to get God's word. Amazing that they were able to use that in order to strengthen them. They would also use uh, like the na their national anthem for the Communist Party. They would sing the tune of this national anthem, but they would put it to words like Amazing Grace, like you know, hymns, and they would use the hem as the words, but they would use the tune as the national anthem in order to trick the soldiers so that if they heard people singing, they're like, oh, they're just singing the national anthem, and that's okay, you know, that's what we want. And so they would leave these groups of people alone if they heard them singing. The amazing ways that Christians were able to trick 
the Communist Party, but at the same time, still worship God. Uh, there is also the story of this, uh, this preacher who was preaching in the jail. And as he was preaching, he was like telling the story of a parable. And as he was preaching, the guards pulled him out of the jail and beat him for his preaching, put him back in the jail and said, where was I? And continued on his preaching. You could not stop these Christians from loving Jesus, from teaching others about Jesus. In fact, they would continue to uh, teach the guards about Jesus. They would have people high up in the Communist Party. They were part of the underground church too, but they had to be real careful how they behaved so that they didn't give away that they were Christians. They would have ways to be able to help Christians by being high up in their ranks. Um, they would look the other way when they saw Christians doing things. Um, but I'm sure there's times where they had to do things that they didn't feel right in their heart to do in order to protect their identity so that they can continue to help as many Christians and the underground church as they could. So Tortured for Christ, I would definitely recommend this book. I would give it five star, sorry, uh, four stars out of five. It was a wonderful book. It taught me so much. It gave me so much strength as a Christian and helped me to realize that I can go through anything. People can go through anything and still have faith and love Jesus. I would give it four stars, though, because the writing wasn't as well written as I would want it to be. There was a lot of things I didn't understand because it, sometimes it wasn't well explained what was happening in different sections of the book. But definitely, I re totally recommend this to any of my Christian friends, um, especially with the things that are happening in America today. We could be going through something similar that the Romanians went through that the Russians went through. We need to be very careful about how we as Christians back down from things and also know that if times get horrible, that doesn't mean it's the end of the church. That just means that the church that's there is going to be very, very strong. So highly recommend this book. Um, I hope to see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye.